the base case for uh, 2030 was roughly $650,000. However, what, what has just happened, the green light from the SEC, uh, we believe will, um, <clears throat> will cause the institutional uh, participation to move towards the bull end of our set of assumptions, which was closer to the 5% asset allocation to Bitcoin over time. Uh, uh, so we think that probability has gone up. So the probability of the bull case, the 1.5 million, has gone up. The audacious prediction by ARK Invest, led by Kathy Wood, regarding Bitcoin's potential surge to 1.5 million per coin. And now, with revised estimations pointing towards an eye-watering $2.3 million per coin, assuming a 5% portfolio allocation from institutional investors, reflects a profound confidence in the cryptocurrency's future. Such a prediction, coming from an entity renowned for its forward-thinking investment strategies, not only captivates the imagination, but invites a deeper exploration of the underlying factors that could drive Bitcoin to these unprecedented heights. At the heart of ARK's analysis lies a blend of optimism and strategic insight into Bitcoin's evolving role in the financial ecosystem. Bitcoin, since its inception, has navigated a path of volatility and uncertainty, with its valuation experiencing dramatic fluctuations. This volatility, as Kathy Woods posits, is the entry fee to a burgeoning asset class that promises to redefine our understanding of money and finance. The recent endorsement by the SEC adds a layer of legitimacy to Bitcoin, potentially accelerating its acceptance among institutional investors, a key demographic whose engagement could significantly impact Bitcoin's valuation. The dual nature of Bitcoin as both a risk-on and a risk-off asset adds a layer of complexity to its investment thesis. In times of economic uncertainty, as witnessed during the Greek financial crisis, Bitcoin has demonstrated an ability to act as a safe haven akin to gold. However, its digital nature and embeddedness within the burgeoning field of decentralized finance, that is DeFi, also positions it as a speculative asset, poised for growth in optimistic market conditions. This duality is pivotal in understanding the Bitcoin's potential trajectory. ARK's early exposure to Bitcoin, dating back to when it was valued at a mere $250, underscores a long-term belief in the cryptocurrency's value proposition. This belief is not unfounded. Beyond speculative interest, Bitcoin represents the spearhead of a broader movement towards an internet financial system. This system promises greater inclusivity, efficiency, and freedom from the traditional financial infrastructures, plagued by inefficiencies and exclusions. The skepticism faced by ARK from traditional asset managers highlights the dichotomy between the conventional financial wisdom and the frontier markets represented by cryptocurrencies. The journey of Bitcoin from an obscure digital currency to a potential mainstay in institutional portfolios exemplifies the disruptive potential of technology in finance. When we took our first exposure to Bitcoin in 2015, it was $250 and, and you know, traditional asset managers and others in the ETF space uh, were making fun of that decision. And so we paid very close attention to the daily moves. And at the time, uh, Greece was threatening to leave uh, the, the European Union. And we were worried about, uh, you know, a relapse into the European sovereign debt crisis. Well, if you were watching Bitcoin very carefully back then, you saw it nudged up every time that, uh, that there was a flare up uh, around Greece. And that gave us confidence that Bitcoin might be a risk off asset as well as a risk on asset. And that was confirmed last year during the regional bank crisis when regional banks imploded and Bitcoin went up 40 to 50%. So I think uh, this recognition that, uh, and I know I've, 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 you know, 
pivoted here a little bit from that paper uh, to the topic at hand. But I think that realization that Bitcoin is not only a risk uh, on asset, you know, a technology, uh, you know, as technology is, uh, but it is a risk off asset in terms of counterparty risk. There's no counterparty risk here like there is in the banking system. Bitcoin's journey from being viewed as a speculative novelty to a serious financial asset reflects a broader recognition of its value proposition amidst fluctuating global economic conditions. The concept of Bitcoin acting as both a risk on and a risk off asset is particularly intriguing, underscoring its dual capacity to serve as a vehicle for speculative investment while also providing a haven during economic turmoil akin to traditional safe haven assets like gold. The mention of Bitcoin halving is critical in understanding its market dynamics. Halving events, which reduce the reward for mining new blocks by half, thereby slowing the rate at which new Bitcoins are created, have historically led to increased scarcity and subsequently significant price increases. Wood's commentary implies that these events are pivotal moments that not only affect Bitcoin's valuation, but also highlight its deflationary nature, a stark contrast to the inflationary tendencies of the traditional fiat currencies. Wood's reflections on the broader economic landscape, including the impact of technological innovation on deflation, further contextualize Bitcoin's role within an evolving financial paradigm. The concept of creative destruction, where old economic structures are dismantled to make way for new, more efficient ones, parallels Bitcoin's potential to disrupt traditional financial systems and currencies, particularly in emerging markets facing devaluation pressures. Moreover, Wood's narrative touches upon the growing acceptance and understanding of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a legitimate asset class among a new generation of investors. This demographic shift, coupled with a broader disillusionment with traditional financial systems and the allure of decentralized finance, suggests a growing momentum behind Bitcoin and similar technologies that could reshape the financial landscape. Finally, discussion on Bitcoin as a part of a broader internet financial system underscores the transformative potential of digital assets to redefine transactions, savings, and investments in a globally interconnected digital age. Wood's vision of Bitcoin at the helm of this transformation driving forwards a new era of monetary systems, technology, and asset classes encapsulates the optimism and pioneering spirit that has characterized the cryptocurrency movement since its inception. You're hitting on something important when you mention those those companies, I know I put them in the report, They are their revenue growth is negative. Now, a large part of that is the rest of the world. And now we're getting flash, flash points, Nigerian Naira down two thirds. This is one of the wealthiest countries in Africa and, and their population has lost two thirds of its purchasing power in dollar terms. And, uh, and probably two thirds of its wealth because they tend not to be well diversified. Uh, you had Egypt just devalue by 40%. This has all happened since I wrote that paper, uh, the 40% decline. Um, of course, Argentina under Millet is basically becoming uh, honest about where that, that currency, the peso, uh, should be. The black market had it right. Uh, it was worth half as much as what the government was saying. So we're seeing, and, and I actually think Bitcoin might be a reason for this. Mm. You know, many people now understand they can have a hedge against inflation and, as I said, deflation um, uh, associated with counterparty risk. Uh, with some Bitcoin. And I think this could be causing uh, a little bit of a domino effect. I, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, you know, create alarm or anything for, uh, you know, other governments. But, you know, I think that this idea that Bitcoin is an insurance policy is, um, is, uh, is important and maybe behind some of the devaluations we're going to we're seeing out there. 